Peter Lee, and again, I want to thank Jennifer and Joanne for a very, very interesting um, opening statement and com compliment you on your work. As Deputy Conway Walsh said, it's always a concern that we don't get talking to people who feel marginalised. And in, I was surprised to hear Joanne mention consultation fatigue. Sometimes I'd have often thought there wasn't enough consultation with people, with the groups that you have mentioned. And I'm delighted that, that, that there has been such widespread consultation and extremely important to get speaking to different groups. And you mentioned in, in your opening remarks about the process has to be inclusive and to ensure that disengaged participants, both North and South, are involved in the process. And I think over the years, having been involved with different cross-border programmes and that, it was always a concern to me that we weren't reaching the people for whom the programmes were intended. And, you know, I've often seen people participate in North-South groups and that, and generally, um, knowing some of the people who participate in them, generally they're, they're often people who are better informed and maybe the people who haven't taken such an interest in, in, in social or economic issues or political issues, that they're not engaged. So your, your reach to those groups is extremely welcome and extremely important. And you, I think you said it was something like 50% of the people, they're not interested in the, the narrow constitutional political issue, but they want the overall issues that affect them on a daily basis, that they want those to be front and centre in all deliberations. And I think that, that, that that's a good starting point and extremely important. Just with, and you said that they had their own vices, their own values and their priorities. Um, again, I think it makes very eminent sense when you take talk about small scale deliberation, you know, more at the micro level than just a macro, uh, one large grouping, um, do, doing research or, or putting forward um, recommendations for decision. And the more, uh, one phrase I think it was, again, Joanne used it, the more we explore, um, the more we explore the better from the point of view of informative um, discussions. One, one or two questions. I think it was Jennifer mentioned, and, and there was some interruption on the line at the time, about border women complaining about inability to access health care across the border. Whether, you know, as, as a person who lives uh, very near the border and represents two of the southern Ulster counties, Cavan and Monaghan, I'd, I'd, be, I'd have good, reasonable knowledge uh, in of issues in my neighbouring constituencies north of the border, were there particular issues there? Again, you mentioned about local councils. I think it was when this committee was formed the last time, or the first time the Shared Island Unit made a presentation to this committee. It was one request I made to them, was to use the knowledge and the expertise that there is in our local authorities. And in fairness, many of our count local authorities, north and south, in the darkest days on this island, they were working together trying to ensure that the people understood one another, there were joint projects put forward and progressed and brought to fruition at a time when there was very little north-south cooperation or particularly very, very little east-west cooperation at a time when the political climate was extremely difficult. So could it, would it be possible just to expand on the health care issue? There was the concerns that were expressed particularly by women in the border counties. Will you, Joanne, or will I? Um, okay, um, a couple of the, the concerns. Um, they all, and with three different groups, and they all started off with many frustrations. And often it was with, with one particular kind of issue, like one woman who had a baby in the north, and then um, um, was living in the South, so had to come back to the South and had to photocopy all of her own records to bring them to her doctor in the hospitals in the South. And um, this became a discussion point throughout um, this particular seminar about the difficulties of communication between hospitals. Um, Joanne, I'm not sure if my machine is working properly. Do you want to... Go on. Yeah, sure. Uh, so when we held our um, deliberative cafe sessions with three 
uh, groups uh, on the border and in Monaghan. And these were three hour long sessions and working with these community groups, we asked them what they would like to talk about, what their priorities are in relation to this wider constitutional discussion. And they identified healthcare as essential for them. Um, so the way in which we uh, structured the, uh, the session and research was very open ended. And we first invited people to talk about their experiences, their lived experiences and what they see as important. And mu much of that discussion then focused around problems, essentially really of communication between the North and the South. They talked about being in a position where they felt able to surf between the two systems, but there were many frustrations in trying to access service delivery and uh, essentially that there was a lack of joined upness um, across the border in relation to healthcare. Um, so they would want to see improved cooperation between departments, between hospital hospitals. They want to see improved um, infrastructure in terms of communications, um, and they want to see uh, improved access um, to, to services uh, on both sides of the border. Um. Thank you very much. I, I've come across, and um, Deputy O'Dowd and Deputy Tully here, we represent border counties. It's seldom I come across, sometimes we come across a woman who has delivered a baby in Northern Ireland, working in Cavan, or I likewise, so, seldom ever. I come across more queries from people in, in South Fermanagh who are wondering why they can't access oncology services at Cavan General Hospital if they go to Belfast or to Derry for some of those services. So there, there, there is so much that can be achieved if we had cooper more cooperation. There is some cooperation, and of course, not to Galvin for, for, for Donegal is extremely important, our ladies, our children's hospital in Crumlin for paediatric care for children from Northern Ireland as well. And of course, we can build on that. And, and, and when the institutions are up and running in Northern Ireland, the North South Ministerial Councils, all of that are working. We sincerely hope that there would be progress in that particular area. You mentioned, you referred to a lot of research that's ongoing between the different universities and different research institutes. That's very, very welcome. And again, I think you, you make the point that it needs to be coordinated in a central um, research unit. I think that makes eminent sense because I think far too often, I'm, those of us in politics, and I'm sure the same goes for people in academic life, we often can be talking w too much to one another instead of reaching out to other people or people reaching us as well. So from that point of view, it's, I think it's very important that the coordination, that the research will be coordinated and not overlapping or duplication of, of, of projects. And I think a, a lot in that respect of both universities north and south and of, co of course in Britain as well and of relevant research institutes north and south and I see some of those research projects are funded by the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Reconciliation Unit and by Shared Island as well and naturally we want to see more of that. In, in regard to how, how did you pick your different groups and was, there, was it just one sitting as such or one session with each group or were there follow-up consultations with groups that were met? Thank you, Okay, Hirlik. Yeah. Okay, so um, we first identified the kind of groups that we would want to engage with. We want to engage with women's groups and um, migrant communities and with young people. Um, and we had the focus groups through Ipsos Mori as well with uh, the citizens who had already identified through surveys as undecided on the constitutional question, should there be a referendum? So the way in which we sought access to the groups that we were interested in was through networks of community organizations. And essentially we started off through contacts, our own contacts with these community organizations. And we worked with um, the Umbrella uh, Women's Organization in the Republic of Ireland and similarly with other organizations um, in Northern Ireland. And we worked with um, umbrella organizations on migrant communities in the north and then smaller migrant associations or ethnic minority associations in both uh, the north and the south. Um, and with, with young people, we worked again through different 
um, associations, student associations, uh, the uh, Washington Ireland program and so on. So it was really through a network of community groups and through our own contacts of who to speak to um, that we were allowed us access and moving from the umbrella organisations deeper down into the smaller uh, locally based um, community groups ensured that we got to, to grassroots communities. Jennifer, do you want to add to that? And just to add that um, in the time and funding available, we only did single three-hour deliberative sessions. We, we believed it'd be much more useful to do and um, to also follow up. So to do one, as it were, health um, deliberative three-hour session, and then a few, few weeks later to bring politicians perhaps in to look at ways to resolve the issues that are identified in session one. So to move between more politically focused and more socially focused um, issues. But um, in the confines of what was relatively little funding that we had, um, we didn't do that ourselves. Right. And th thank you. Could, could I ask clearly again, from, from listening to you this morning, um, the people who, involved, who were involved in the deliberations, they were more interested in day-to-day -day social economic issues rather than political issues, the narrow, what, what often, you know, the, the political issues in regard to politics, constitutional issues, political structures, configurations, whatever, was, was, it, was the interest of your participants overwhelmingly more in relation to economic, social, bread and butter, day-to-day -day issues than political and inverted common issues? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had um, we interviewed some politicians on, as it were, on the side, and among our focus groups, I think we had one local councillor, one um, party political person, among our, our various focus groups. But all the rest were primarily interested in, in um, social issues, not always just economic issues. I mean, some were were passionately interested in gender politics. Um, or things like that, um, or women's health, or um, reproductive health. Um, some of them were um, really the young people, the disadvantaged young people we talked to, um, were really interesting and interested in social issues and interested in a sense in communication. And they had absolutely no trust in politicians. So they were kind of political, but they didn't like politicians and they wanted to talk. So um, they were, were not <laughs> shocked by that revelation. So we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but has, did social media play a part, would you think, in informing the views of your participants? The young people, yes. I'm not so sure about the older ones. Right. And would you be concerned about the influence social media had? I am concerned, but not from our research. Um, our research with the disadvantaged young people we talked to, and this was really well planned and worked with community groups and so on. They were really impressive young people. And yes, they got their information from social media, but they also listened to each other, North and South and Protestant and Catholic. And you could see them thinking about these issues and so on. So I, I wasn't worried about them, but um, I can see why people are worried about misinformation and social media. And in conclusion, Akayori, was the, and you answered the question earlier, Jennifer, I think, was it a 50 50 participation, 50% 50 of the people involved from Northern Ireland and 50% from this state? Was it roughly that divide, was it? It was, wasn't it, Joanne? More or less. Thank you. Thanks for your league. Thank you very much. Uh, for